Alright, so today is the day I'm actually going to start my new desk project. A couple things wrong with the current setup that I'm hoping to address with this new desk that I'm building. Uh, and I am building it from scratch. This one, obviously, I purchased, I believe, from Ikea. It served me well for a couple years, but it is pretty cheaply made. It was the best fit at the time for what I needed, geometrically speaking, which I have a you know, relatively small space over here because I need a lot of storage, which you guys can see. So the desk has started to develop a bow in it. There's some lamination stuff happening with the top. I want to get the desk up off the floor a little more. My chair, my desk chair, and most desk chairs, by the way, uh, don't fit under it. I'm hoping to be able to move my monitors up probably four or five inches to be more eye level with where I need to sit in the chair and just build something that has a little more custom fit into that area. I mentioned it being off the floor. I want to get everything off the floor, which includes my computer tower. I'd like to be able to incorporate all of that just in one design. So if we take a look at it, you can see that there's the big gap between the wall and the desk. Back here, I know the lighting's not very good. Uh, it's probably about eight inches or so. And then we have this big space between the desk and the wall. Um, but this whole area right here, I'd like to be able to take advantage of and build just out to the wall and out to this shelf. I don't have a ton of space in this office and this desk, the way it's blocked, really takes away. It's kind of the first thing you see when you come into the office. Um, and it makes it look a lot smaller than it than it probably really is. I mentioned some of the accessories. I have my mic mounted up here upside down, which isn't ideal for a lot of reasons. Mainly that it doesn't stay because all the tension in the arms are flipped. My plan is to make this desk myself using some wood. And this is the general outline and plan I have to make that. I've already purchased the wood, so my goal today is to be able to make this rough outline uh, of the desk using the dimensions that I've laid out. So I'm pretty sure I have everything laid out the way I want it. Now is kind of the time to put everything together, join everything. I'm gonna be using pocket holes in this pocket hole jig. First time I've really ever used it, I tried a couple spare pieces just to make sure I had the concept. Seems pretty easy. I'm gonna start with the, probably the two big ones and then work around to get those joined together. So, there it goes. <laughs> pocket holes drilled, everything's lined up. Unfortunately, I don't have the right size screws that I need. Um, I think I bought two inch and I drilled the holes for two and a half inch because that's what the instructions for the jig said. So, small mistake, once I have the right screws, put it all together and start sanding, get it all the joints, made it up, all that other stuff. Probably drilled more pocket holes than I needed, but maybe hoping that some of the shorter screws I can maybe drive um, a little tighter up against the, uh, you know, the edge of the board. So, no, overall pretty happy with it. Alright, so it's been a couple days, um, really just been waiting for the time to come out here and actually get this done. Also. I think I finally purchased the right screws in order to finish putting the office desk together, at least getting all the boards together. You'll have to forgive the lighting in here. I brought an extra light in just to make sure that you guys could see this. Uh, I'm doing it in the garage because I believe this is the only place that I have actually level concrete. The driveway, I had my big level out there. There's just too many lumps. Um, I wanted to be able to stand on the boards while I screwed them together in order to kind of press them flat, so to speak. No idea if it'll work. I um, think if not, I'll just buy a piece of glass and lay the glass over the top. Should be pretty straightforward now that all the pockets are drilled.
table's pretty much done. Um, at least all the pieces are together. I'm gonna put the first sanding attempt on it, just using the 80 grit, trying to knock all the, the big rough edges out. It's super hot out here. Time for pass number two. All right, this is pass number three, and we have switched to 100 grit. We're stepping up the grit in order to get a smoother finish. Alright, so it's been several weeks, but now we're back at it, getting back on top of this project. Um, so a couple steps that I'm going to try to get done today is to put a final sand on this. I think I'm going to go over it once or twice with 220 and get it all cleaned up with a wet rag. And then we're going to put the stain on it. Now for the stain, I went with a Jayco bean. I think it might be too light. Um, all the furniture in my office is black. Um, but we may do multiple coats of this and worst case scenario I have the black polish that we used for the front door that I could also use so um, we'll see how it goes I'm also doing a little research on trying to figure out what kind of coating I want to put on the top of it right now I'm leaning towards epoxy I think that's gonna make it like nice and smooth uh, kind of like a glass finish on the top as well as on the edges so Got to get one more step of the hard stuff out of the way, which is sanding. Um, so it's time to hit it with a 220 grit sandpaper. Alright, so got the final sand done. It's really, really smooth. Now we're going to take a wet rag, sort of wipe it all down and get all the dust off and get it ready for the stain. put the stain on get it all mixed ready to go stirred nice and smooth looks pretty dark so that's a good sign that's what I was going for what I'm actually gonna do is flip the board over do a test spot um, see how that looks and then flip it over to the top and then uh, do that all right test spot is done it's dry the actual desk will look different than this because this isn't really cleaned up and treated like it is but you can see there's different colors in here obviously the the dark spots are turning you know, pretty close to black, but there's some darker uh, browns in there as well. I'm pretty happy with it. So now I'm gonna flip this thing over, get to the front side, and lay the first coat of color down. coat of stain on this thing. I know from the camera it probably looks very dark. It is dark, but it's not black. Um, you can still see a lot of the wood color. Um, you can still see all the grain patterns, so it, it may lighten up a little bit as it sits here and dries. Overall, I'm pretty happy with it right now. I'm gonna wait for it to dry and kind of settle into a color before I decide whether I'm gonna put another coat on it or not. But yeah, looks good so far. All right, so stain on the desk is done. Uh, as you guys can see here, um, it's also been a few weeks since I've touched this. This looks good. I'm pretty happy with how it looks. Darkened up real nice, but you can still see the wood grain, which is what I was shooting for. So today, I'm actually going to try to put the epoxy coat on. So I've never done that before. So it'll be something new for me to learn. Seems somewhat easy as long as you follow the directions of mixing it correctly. You have two-part resin and hardener and all that stuff. Seems straightforward. Um, so I'm gonna, I'm planning to do one top coat, but as you guys can maybe see, there's some gaps uh, in the wood where it wasn't completely, um, completely flat and flush. Um, a professional would have a table saw where they were to plane and edge these boards that were, so that they would butt up nice and even against each other. Um, but I don't have any of that, so. I think what my plan is, is to take some, some caulking, flip the table over and seal some of these cracks so that when I lay the epoxy on the top, 
um, it doesn't just seep into the holes and create like these little divots. Or at least that's how I expect it to work. So, and this thing is supposed to be ready in 30 minutes, so I'm thinking I can lay this, get it going, and then start mixing the epoxy and lay that first coat down. So that's the plan for today. All right, so after reading the instructions, it looks like I need to apply a seal coat to this because it is a porous wood. I guess the concern is that air trapped within the wood would bubble up through the surface of the epoxy. So the seal coat is brushed on. It's designed to kind of like lay that very thin layer that dries real quickly and kind of seals everything in. And then I can pour the flood coat all over the, the table or the desk. So I'm gonna mix that right now. It's just 16 ounces of both. Do it here in this little little cup. Um, and then brush it on with this old gross brush, which is the only brush I have that doesn't have stain or something on it. Not super excited about using this gross brush, but it's all I got. Um, and obviously it's gonna be pretty ruined after you put epoxy on it. I'm gonna mix it and get the seal coat on. And then four hours later, I'm gonna come back and actually put the flood coat on. Okay, so 16 ounces of both. So here's the hardener. We're gonna pour that in first, because that's what the instructions say to do. That's 16 ounces there. And now the resin. done um, it's super shiny it also doesn't look that good uh, it's kind of spotty and bubbly but I think that's what it's supposed to look like it's so from what I've read it's not supposed to look good um, but I don't know if it's supposed to look this bad but the flood coat should be thick enough to cover everything um, pretty similar to mixing the seal coat it's one-to-one -one hardener to resin I think I'm only going to mix half the recommended amount because I have such a small work surface. I don't want to mix too much, uh, one waste it, and two, I might have to do multiple coats, so mixing smaller batches would probably help me there. So anyway, let's do it. Time to get this flood coat poured. Okay, that wasn't enough. I gotta mix another batch. All right, got another batch going. All right, so got it down, looks better. There's bubbles and stuff in the epoxy. The technique for getting those out is actually using a heat gun and popping all the bubbles. As you guys can see, it looks like glass right now. So, I got pretty much all the edges. It's supposed to drip off the edges here. Um, and that's how you get the, uh, the epoxy on the sides. So four to six hours with this coat, and then we'll see if we need to do another coat or not. We're looking good. All right, just got done using the air gun to pop all the bubbles. And man, it was so cool to see all the little little imperfections pop out of the service. Look at this thing now. There's still a few more little bubbles that I'm gonna try to I'm gonna try to pop right now. I got a little sinkhole here that'll add to the rusticness of the desk, I guess. I know it's hard to see on the camera, but this thing is smooth. Cool. Alright, I'm gonna go back through and pop the rest of the bubbles. Alright. So I've carefully flipped the desk over to the back side. So what happens when you pour the flood coat is as the epoxy runs over the side, it gets to the bottom and it forms a collection point and then that sort of drips down. So what you end up with is a bunch of these little bubbles or uh, little 
dimples that, that form along the edges. So before I'm ready to take this inside the house and get it all marked up, I have to sand all these down. Now I've done a little bit of experimenting with sanding these. Uh, sandpaper works kind of well, but it doesn't work well to put it on the sander that I have. So what I'm actually going to try today is to use a Dremel to one, make the process faster, but also be a little more precise with what I'm sanding down. Um, and we'll see how that goes. So this being the back edge, I'm not too worried about this. This is a visible edge and this over here is a visible edge. So I need to be really careful with how that looks and how I'm, how I'm doing that. But um, so yeah, it's going to be a pretty tough job. Uh, there's a lot of these dimples all the way around the edges. So I'm hoping though 45 minutes will be about enough because that's when football starts. So yeah, got to get going. <laughs> Got it outside all cleaned up, sanded. All of the rough parts that were on the back side of this are now gone. You can kind of see where I sanded there. Got a little too deep in some spots, but you know, it shouldn't be visible. So it should be good. And then we had some kind of bubbling that happened on the back side here that I had to sand down so that it sits flush against the wall, but again, shouldn't be able to see that. But get this thing out in the sun, you can one, Tell how smooth it is. It's pretty smooth. Um, you can really see the wood, which is cool. You can also see where I maybe left some inclusions without, you know, I didn't hit it with the heat gun exactly. I don't think they'll be super visible. Like here's one right here where a bubble came through and popped. I don't even know if the camera's gonna be able to pick that up and kind of see it, but um, I don't think you'll be able to see it in the lighting in my office, so. It's finally time to get this thing out of the garage, get it moved into the house, and start working on the legs and the other mounting locations. So, excited to get it out of the garage, finally. So, I got the desk actually sitting on top of my old desk. Um, which, ironically, um, I actually think I like the height of where it's sitting now. So that's what I'm going to use as a reference as far as how I'm going to mount it. So actually have all of these pipe fittings on the floor. And I'm gonna to try to use these to make one of the legs. So two flanges that are gonna to bolt to the desk, two flanges that are gonna to bolt to the wall, and then kind of like this angled L-shaped bracket. Um, I have no idea if it's gonna work. I still need to lay all these out. I tried laying them out on the floor of Home Depot, but that's not necessarily a good way to do it. I couldn't measure everything accurately, plus, as everything screws in, the dimensions kind of change. Really, I'm going to have to figure that out now. Okay, so I think I almost got what I need. Um, had to change a couple things up, and I'll need to go get a couple more parts from the store. Um, missing one of these stands where the other flange will go here um, to mount to the top of the desk. And then my plan down here for the structural component of this angle bracket is to utilize a pipe that will go through this oversized T-fitting here, like this. And then screw into so it'll look like that but it'll go through here and then this wall flange will, will mount to the end of that pipe um, and then that'll keep you know structurally everything in place so I'm pretty happy with how it turned out I may try to swap this fitting over here for a 90 that I think that'll look cleaner obviously we'll need to clean this up one more time and then paint it all I was just gonna paint it like a, a black. But uh, yeah, I'm, uh, I'm happy right now how this turned out. Okay, so the desk is done for the most part. Um, everything is bolted together. Everything is kind of put in place. As you can see, the computer is still on the floor. I have a bracket on order that'll actually lift that up. So we're gonna get it off the ground that way. We can keep everything clean on the floor, which has been a problem. Uh, in the past with dust and all those types of things. I still have some wall painting to fix and touch up, 
but the desk looks really good. It looks really good in the natural light coming into the window. Um, the gloss is, is really cool looking and the, the pipe mounting actually turned out pretty good as well. Now there's a couple of things I don't like uh, that I'll probably end up fixing. One, the pipe bracket is actually a little bit longer than it should be. I didn't have the means to cut and retap all the threading on the pipe. I was kind of locked into the standard joints and fixtures that you could buy, mainly 45 and 90 degree elbows. However, the pipe bracket extension may be a blessing in disguise, who knows. There's additional wiring to take care of. Once I get the computer mounted, I'll know what links I need to run and, and kind of mount everything. I mean, it's just little things of why I like this setup. The height of it is one thing. It's a very sturdy desk, which I like as well. Also, something small like my chair being able to fit all the way under it really makes the room seem a whole lot bigger. I am rocking Corsair RGB accessories. Shout out to the RGB Army. It looks really good against the gloss of the desk, and it looks good overall, especially when I'm in here with the lights off, which is pretty much all the time. So yeah, that's the project, guys. Let me know what you think. What would you have done differently? What would you add now? What would you change about it? Really interested to hear your feedback. And as always, with these types of projects, this isn't super complicated. Basic tools like sanders and saws will get you something like this. Don't be afraid to get out there and try it, look it up, do some research online. Maybe you have to buy a few tools, but hey, that's a few tools that you can use for the next project and the project after that. And pretty soon you'll have a full shop full of stuff where you can do even more complicated things. Also, stuff like this gives you a sense of ownership in your workspace or your office or in your home, you know, you can always walk by or look at this or when you use it, you know, hey, I built this with my own hands, I put in the work, this is something that's mine. And I think that's really cool. Needless to say, I challenge you guys to get out there and try something like this. Go out, do something, make something with your hands, and you'll be better because of it. Y'all take care.